a good afternoon YouTube Today is the 22nd You know, it's the 23rd of February It's a Sunday I List down a few things that I would like to say about my bike Because today is the review of the CBF190X Fighthawk Let's talk about some of the features of this bike uh, It's a Honda But it's not designed by the Japanese Honda It's designed by China It's It's called the CB190 because they just round it up It's actually 184cc uh, A single cylinder Air-cooled engine Fuel injected So It's not so bad it has some power to it uh, In the category of single cylinder bikes lah. It's a 4 stroke engine eh, hmm. What are the good features That this bike has Jalan lah, you are already in my way <laughs> Okay, any Good features that this bike have Or the features that I like Is This bike is uh, Full LED Meaning all the lightings on this bike is LED It is super comfortable uh, Nowadays it's very hard to get a Bike that is comfortable And at the same time it's has the looks that you like uh, usually when the bike has the looks that you like most of the time it is not comfortable for example dirt bikes I love dirt bikes but it is never comfortable it's like a it's like a ball catcher you know it catches your ball the moment you sit on it another good feature of the bike is the looks I actually like the look of this bike it has the same look as the uh, CB400X A little bit like the NC750X And also the oh Wait, is it Cross Runner or Cross Tour? Uh, one of it lah Like all the big brothers of this bike But somehow they call it The Baby Africa Twin But I don't agree to that I don't agree that It looks like the Africa Twin at all The features that I don't like about this bike It is for uh, for touring for long distance riding it is slow it, it's not painfully slow it's it can go 120 something on a long stretch of road you can you can drag the last gear all the way uh, to 128 kilometers per hour that's the fastest I've ever gone with this bike but if long distance cruising you can cruise at 110 kilometers per hour but that is stress stressing the engine a bit lah uh, I for me I don't give a fuck I know my engine well I know what it can handle I know how much I can stretch it so yeah that's why I stretch it Another bad feature of the bike is the ground clearance Okay, for small bikes, especially in Singapore Especially as a delivery rider I mount the curb a lot because of the convenience uh, For example, I'm collecting an order at this shop And the shop is right next to the main road And what I will do is I will just go onto the curb And when I want to when I want to deliver the order I will just go off the curb instead of finding a ramp or something because it's shorter it's faster that way okay and for this bike actually a lot of the newer generation of bikes the ground clearance are all very low the worst part is the lowest point of this bike other than the tires lah 
is the exhaust uh, what they call it catalytic converter uh, in Bahasa Melayu is the perut of the exhaust means the stomach of the exhaust is where it converts all the carbon monoxide uh, it filters out the carbon monoxide into CO2 I think uh, and also the food pack is also very low uh, so I scrap the food rest a lot you know below the food rest there's this nipple thing uh, it's like it's that's for you to scrap and it's for the bike to tell you like oi I cannot corner more lah chibai stop cornering so much lah uh, bikes have these features to uh, to tell you that's the limit but I put in some good tires back then and I corner 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 until I that whole nipple thing finish already and at the same time I also scrap my exhaust uh, cover now my bike don't have any exhaust cover <laughs> it's okay lah that, that feature on the bike now looks ugly lah but other than that the other parts are all looking good okay next uh, back features is yes no ABS uh, it's front heavy so it's not good for my wheelie practice it is uh, made in China so it doesn't have any uh, performance aftermarket parts even a sprocket that is a different size than the original they don't have it uh, it uses uh, okay this bike uses a heavy duty chain uh, size as in it's a thick size for a small bike it, the chain size is uh, 428 so it's quite thick for a small CC bike lah. I mean it's hard to stretch this chain I use this chain for I think uh, 6 months uh, yeah, I use the o-ring one it's slightly more expensive but it keeps the lubrication in the chain lah. so it's better the tire size it came with a uh, front that's 11070 and the the rear it was 14070 uh, you can go bigger the rear you can go with 150 but it's a bit heavy and for a single cylinder 190cc it's a lot of difference you might think uh, like, uh, 10 mm on the rear wheel like how much can it affect the bike oh you lose a lot of uh, acceleration power man but when you hit the corners oh my josh it is good it is fun it sticks to the ground well yeah oh another bad feature the since there's no aftermarket parts you have to bear with what you have stock so the suspension especially the rear suspension it is super soft I I don't know how I survive all those corners with this soft suspension but or maybe because I only lean a lot when I hit the uh, like very smooth corners uh, like this one for example excuse me I want to corner okay uh, you see, there is some very smooth right? I can corner But, when it comes to bumpy corners uh, Or the one that has small bumps And causes your bike to vibrate In a weird way It doesn't handle well It slips And it bounces everywhere It's like gelek gelek oi That's fucked up man So, yeah Honda, please come up with aftermarket suspension for this or maybe YSS, uh, Showa, the, you know the cheaper cheaper brands please design one gantung for this bike lah pity me, I'm a heavy person you know I need a stronger suspension, please 
Okay, uh, other bad features, the brakes. Uh, compared to what I've experienced before, this bike, 400X and NC750X, they all have super soft brakes. Their brakes are like very spongy and it's, I mean, it's just nice. It's like, just enough to work. I cannot even do a stoppy with this bike. It's hard to control a wheelie with the rear brakes. That's how soft it is. But the rear brakes are enough for me to lock the rear wheel. The front wheel is enough for me to like press hard and lock the front wheel and get into an accident. So yeah, it's enough. And the good thing, one aftermarket part that is available and good for this bike is the crash bar. The crash bar and the top uh, case rack. The version they they have for this model, they have three different types of crash bar. Uh, the ones are, that are very subtle, the one that is very protective, the one that is good looking. I take the one. I took the one that is most protective, lah. But it makes my bike heavy and bulky and slower. I think without the crash bar and the box, I can go much faster with this bike, lah. Another bad feature of the bike is it is fat. This bike is fat. It's wide. So you know, like on a on the freeway, expressway, highway, whatever. Uh, on the open road lah it feels good to put your hand wide like that you know you see like you know like you're drying your armpit okay but when it comes to small roads and traffic and maneuvering in between traffic uh, like you want to slay uh, lane splitting it's a bit too bulky for that the handlebar is long and uh, even when the handlebar is long, the side mirror is protruding out. So you understand how wide it is. Lah. The width of this bike is almost similar to a uh, NC750X. Yes, it's fat. And whenever I ride my wife's bike, the Spark 135 is a cup tie. The, the lane splitting is super enjoyable man <laughs> that's how fat this bike is ok uh, a lot of you will ask like uh, would you recommend this bike yes I would recommend this bike it's the fuel consumption uh, even when you abuse it even when you are riding aggressively you ride at the highway, your RPM is at 8,000, 9,000, all the way. You can still get uh, about 25 to 30 kilometers per liter. That is how good the fuel consumption is. If you are very careful with how you ride, if you are very uh, cautious in your riding style, okay, the the fuel consumption will go it can go all the way to uh, 40 uh, kilometers per liter it can go to 40 kilometers per liter if you are uh, like a very careful rider so is that's a good fuel consumption yeah one full tank i can go melaka easily even if i whack even if i ride slowly i will reach melaka that's a no, that's a long distance lah. 2 to 300 kilometers like that. It's a, it has a good fuel range lah. And it has a big fuel tank. Uh, I think it's about 11 or 12 liters uh, capacity. It's good. I love it. You know, especially when I go to JB, I... Yeah lah, when I go through the jam, this bike is annoying. But when I come home, I'm ha I'm happy because... I have 12 liters of cheap petrol to spend uh, for my working days all that now if I don't work as a delivery rider for that one week and I 
only go to work and come home from work, go to work, come home from work, after work, go out with my wife, my petrol can last me one week. Get that? It's one week of petrol filled up in your tank and it only cost you about like 20 to 30 ringgit. So this bike is good. Uh, is it good for deliveries? Yeah, but uh, honestly, I feel like I want to cut my handlebar to make it shorter. But I'm okay lah. You know, all these bad features are the features that you can get used to. You can just watch like, I uh, after riding for a while, you'll be okay lah. No problem lah. Uh, like that lah. That's why I love this bike. I adapted to it. Uh, do I recommend it to speed demons? No, I don't because it doesn't carry much speed. It's quite boring for people who have experienced speed. Mm -hmm. Maintenance wise, is it easy to maintain? Yes, you don't have to deal with coolants. You don't have to deal with uh, Tutti, which is engine lubricant. You just have to deal with spark plug, engine oil. That's it. But the engine oil, it takes 1.2 liter. Uh, according to the manual I follow. 1.2 liter. I ever tried 1 liter. Because the manual says, uh, if only oil change, you can just top up 1 liter. But if it's overhaul or you open up the engine, it's 1.2 liter full capacity. But now I go for 1.2 liter all the way. So you have to buy uh, two bottles every time, and it sucks. It's annoying, but you know I have to do it. Is to take care of my bike. I haven't give my bike a name yet. Temenung aja, hello. I will give this bike a 6.5 uh, but the 3.5 that it's short of are the things that mostly you can get used to you know like uh, the ground clearance the maneuverability of the bike the only thing that you cannot get used to and you need a different bike for it is the power of the bike it's lacking of course i would like to get a bigger bike a po more powerful bike uh, better looking don't need lah this one is pretty enough for me lah i like this bike a lot the looks uh, what else yeah that's that's my overall scoring for this bike i like it and my wife like it a lot because why because the pillion seat is fat and it's thick so whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. red light camera man chill okay so it's comfortable for her she likes uh riding on this bike as a pillion lah. she don't like riding this bike as a rider because it's heavy and for her it's a bit difficult lah. If there's anything that I miss out, please point out at the comment section and I'll make another video of it, uh, maybe more detail lah. because I know lah, I'm just, my motovlogs are mostly a part-time thing, I do it while doing something else, so I'm not 100% focused, it's just me sharing my thoughts. Alright guys, that's all I have for today. Uh, if there are any other details that you guys want to know about this bike oh shit oh yeah this bike it has the engine that is exactly the same as the CB19, CBF190X Tourism it also has the same engine as the CB190R uh, the one BBDC is using right now what else? Uh, 
uh, there's another one is CB190 I think it's SS it's like a cafe racer looking bike uh, that's the latest one with the same engine so the fact that Honda uses the same engine over and over again for different models that shows how good the engine is like it's very reliable uh, it's easy to maintain it has enough power so yeah what more can you ask for right and that's all i have for today uh, if you guys have any other details about this bike or the similar models that you are not sure about and you want to know most of you ask because you, you are considering this bike as your next one uh, so you ask for opinions yeah i am more than willing to share the details with you lah that's it for this video, I am Chongs the Monster, April, signing out, see you on the next one!